That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Underwater, opening January 10th, 2020, uh, starring Kristen Stewart, directed by William Eubank, uh, courtesy of 20th Century Fox, a.k.a. Disney. So describe the plot. Uh, it's about a group of people that are stuck leagues beneath the uh, ocean, ocean, uh, and uh, they they have to fight their way back up to the top. Yeah. <laughs> so the basic story was uh, or is appealing. When I saw the trailer, I was excited because mm -hmm. I like underwater creature feature type movies, mm -hmm. and this film does deliver that. This is almost a good movie. Almost. Almost. So this filmed spring of 2017 uh, and was uh, considerably delayed due to this Fox-Disney merger. So we can blame that on the January release. Uh, based on what I saw, I, this would have fit in like August, <laughs> you'd think. Uh, I, I did the plot, although you know, that's a bare bones synopsis of it, um, it is very vague about what it's trying to say. Uh, it's kind of an environmental horror film-ish slash survival thriller. Uh, however, I, I'd say it's basically an alien Poseidon adventure ripoff. Yes. Even to the degree of the, the original 1979 Ridley Scott alien. Uh, I'd say even the dynamics of the limited crew that are uh, trying to survive are very similar. Yeah. And Kristen Stewart has a shot where she's in her little panties, yes. with a buzzed head. Yeah, it's very reminiscent of Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. It is, but although she kept, I kept thinking of Susan Powder. Or <laughs> Susan Powder, yeah. I, I think Kristen Stewart's uh, very appealing to see on screen. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed her performance well enough. Uh, I, I think the problem with all of the characterizations in this uh, are at the script level and kind of the directing level. Um, it, it was, this was a blacklist screenplay, which I don't understand why, because even if this was extremely watered down, pun intended, uh, this is a very derivative narrative. Uh, so it was written by Brian Duffield and then rewritten by Adam Cozard, who uh, did the last Tarzan film. Uh, William Eubank, his first film was 2011's Love. Uh, and it was about an uh, astronaut that's stuck in a space station cut off from Earth, which so it sounds like same thing. And uh, I, I did find his 2014 sophomore film, The Signal, promising, which premiered at Sundance uh, with Brenton Thwaites. Uh, and it, but again, kind of this isolated protagonist who's trying to make their way out of a nightmare scenario. What did you like about this film? <laughs> well, I think so. Kristen Stewart works for a company that is like drilling for, I'm assuming fossil fuels or something. Which is totally the resources. Resources in the Earth's core. So they have this drill that goes down like seven miles. So the deepest anyone's ever drilled before. So just that alone was scary enough. Like sure. the logistics of it, how this underwater world works was scary enough. So I, that I, I really liked. Uh, I think Kristen Stewart and Vincent Cassell. Oh yeah, Vincent Cassell is the captain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a good job. I think the film looks good enough. There are several scenes particularly involving the creatures that are very... Um, like, I mean, murky is an appropriate word to use, but it also is like a little too murky, like... Uh, yes, it, it was and, confusing, and confusing to follow. Yeah, to follow certain, action, certain sequences. action sequences. And the creatures looked like sloth versions of the Crypt Keeper. Me. Yeah, they I, had, I had a problem with the creatures, but it's, there's no point bringing it up. They didn't appear to look like something that would live in the ocean, like aerodynamically, but also uh, we understand that they, they're... So I think the premise of where these creatures come from is that we drilled into like a thermal layer. Mm -hmm. So there's warm water for these things to... That's not really well explained. I don't know that it needs to be. Uh, but I, I was thinking... Because we saw this yesterday, uh, I kept thinking back to the shots of the drill that's going deep, deep down to the earth and about how we've pillaged Earth's resources, and I kept thinking of Earth rape. 
Earth Rape. <laughs> That'll be which, the tagline for this is, video. Which is kind of what I think it was trying to go for, but then, it, like, all of the dialogue in this film is very on the nose and... Very on the nose and all over the place. Insufferable in sequences. But we were talking about what we liked. So I think Kristen Stewart, Vincent Cassell give good performances and they're fun to see on screen. The basic story in the world it takes place in is appealing to me. Mm -hmm. So it's the, cinemato the cinematographer uh, Bojan Bozelli, who uh, is the favorite uh, DP of Gore, Gore Verbinski. He did The Ring and Lone Ranger. Okay. And so I guess he can be credited with that. Marco Beltrami, uh, the notable composer. I think uh, I think that the score had to do a lot of heavy lifting in this. Um, yeah. So what I didn't like the cancer at the center of this film is T.J. Miller. Oh, well, no, we need to save that. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. He's the worst part to me. Side table. He's the worst part. What I didn't like, uh, I think the basic premise is enough that I didn't need all, like, Kristen Stewart's character is so affected. Like, she just, from the very opening scene, is just shaky and... It seems like she's going through something, and then we keep alluding, to, or we keep show, being shown this image of like a photograph of her with this brown man, who we presume is like a lost love. Vincent Cassell's character, you know, is affected by like the loss of his daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, the other two, there are another two. The other two main characters are a couple, mm -hmm. and they both seem very affected. <laughs> Yeah, like, and then there's T.J. Miller. It just it's like everyone just seems like they're just not like regular. Why can't we just see regular people doing their job underwater? Like it's already a like unnerving, stressful environment. I didn't need all the extra nonsense. Because I, I think immediately after getting out of the screening, uh, we're reflecting on Alien and all of the conversations that prior to the Alien coming out. Like those were they're blue collar workers. There's management. There's the science officer. All of them are pretty just unhappy about doing their job. So they're just they're just there to get a paycheck. And here I want. I guess it, this film would have worked so much better for me if they were just like regular schmucks who are just unremarkable except for this extraordinary thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. And then T J Miller is oh, like God. I don't because without him this film would seem quite serious and dramatic. Mm -hmm. But then you have his goofy ass. Oh, in his his introductory line as Kristen Stewart digs him out of the rubble because it it kind of opens. We're going from the get go almost. Uh, she, the the pacing's nice. She digs him out of the rubble, and his first line to her is something like, "You flat chested elven creature." Uh, he carries around this stupid, dirty oh. ass stuffed animal. He has a joke for everything, mm -hmm. and they're not funny. No, he looks like how he looks, but. He's shirtless for most of it, and he's not in the best shape, which is fine. He has this, like, really... Is that a real tattoo? or I don't know. Whatever. It'd look better on someone else. But he's just so distracting and made the movie... Like, the tone is so confusing because he's the only one cracking jokes, and nothing about this film seems and, light. But none of the jokes are good. I don't... And it's not... It, I don't even know if you can even just blame him, because none of the lines that he has to speak are uh, entertaining or funny. It just off... Key and he's just generally unpleasant. Yeah. Um, Jessica Henwick also uh, Game of Thrones alum. Who's who, that? She was the the other woman. Oh, okay. She was uh, her character. Uh, you oh, can't really she blame plays her like a that. research assistant slash mm -hmm. intern or whatever, mm -hmm. and she is just like her character is she gets, annoying. She gets a lot of bad dialogue. Yeah, right? poor thing. Uh, it's very predictable. Um, I don't. I, I normally spoil films. I don't want to spoil this one because I feel like if you see it, you might need something to... <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they're, it does try to have a little bit of a surprise within the parameters that it's working with. Uh, but I don't think it... I mean, I think it's pretty predictable. It is very predictable. I could call it... I called it like halfway through, but mm -hmm. I think... Uh, I just... I find it funny that Fox, who dumped it in, into this slot... <laughs> wanted a, like nobody to ruin the spoilers but yeah I don't know what they're talking about I mean the, the one thing I will say is the site like the sizing of the like the scale of the creatures was confusing because mm -hmm. at one point they seem quite small like not the babies but because mm -hmm. they're babies and then there are like some that seem like the size of humans but then we see them dangling for, at one point and they seem maybe like three times bigger than humans mm -hmm. And then the mother of all these creatures, which I guess would be a spoiler, who's, I guess, coming from the Earth's core, mm -hmm. 
is, is like bigger than Godzilla or something. Yeah, it, it's as big as like the the station at the base level, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is huge, so it just seems. Yeah, the scaling of these creatures was a little off and the appearance of the mother creature was very like uh cartoonish yes uh and, and i get the sense that I, I think this was meant to be a little more um adult perhaps uh it, and it ends with these it, it begins and ends with these because it thinks the audience is stupid apparently with these awful newspaper headline montages which uh, again, are unnecessary and well, especially well. The the trailer gives it away that there is a creature unknown to man within the film, mm -hmm. but I think the the opening sequence with the headlines really kind of just throws the film away. Mm -hmm. Like we just know where it's going, which is what it's exactly what the studio did with this film. Well, then to spoil the film, they threw it away. Kristen Stewart at the end, she decides that to I guess save. I don't get the sense that she wants to save the world or save anyone. I just, because she has this like inner monologue where she's saying that sometimes you have to, like, something about like de like deciding when to do the right thing. So this bitch decides to blow up the entire <clears throat> like infrastructure, which Much creates like, like an, an explosion big enough that there's like, you know, like again like alien and escape pods and yeah like escape pods, cetera, and, like, blowing up the space, blowing up the base station and the core of this like drill so that it destroys all the creatures and the mother creature and then of course she's obliterated but her two friends who were able to survive are hopefully safe thanks to the newspapers that let us know and oh right that, that's right the credits show and the, the bunny newspaper headlines and the bunny oh that was grating but yeah it, as i said there were there were moments where i'm like oh this is almost good and then immediately a next sequence would make me rethink i that. would so i would give this film two out of five stars i think that's fair mm -hmm. um because i i do I, I did enjoy it enough, like sitting through it. Sure, it clips um, along well enough. And I, d I would recommend seeing it in a theater. And if you do like Kristen Stewart, uh, you know, did, she doesn't do that many uh, studio films. Well, well I'm becoming a film of her, uh, a fan of hers now. Yeah. So yeah, she did a good job and it's fun to watch her and mm -hmm. I think she's pretty strong and the, the film deserves a large screen, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mainly because it's so damn dark and murky that watching it on your little 56 inch or whatever you have. <laughs> Might be difficult to catch all the things, but yeah, two out of five. You would give it the same. Two, two out of five. five. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.